really, really good lad. Really good person. The desire and the determination were far away to anything I'd seen. And a strength that's that that's comes from within, like he's so powerful. He used to score maybe at least 50 tries a year, I'm not even exaggerating it. Playing alongside him and watching him, you know, when there is tough moments on the field, you know he'll put his hand up, you know he'll do the, do the tough stuff. Bateman, good on his feet, is John Bateman. Bateman will score! Here comes pressure. Bateman. Bateman gets the try for Wigan! I think whatever he strives to do, he'll do it if he puts his mind to it. He'll, he'll do anything for anyone. He's kind, he's a bit annoying sometimes. <laughs> it's where I'm from, it's, it's what I love, you know what I mean? My mum my my made sure me and my brother had everything. She, she worked and worked hard for me and my brother to have everything and we never went without. His primary school years, he was absolutely fine. He was quite quiet, he was quite reserved, but yeah, when he got to secondary, he tended to get into trouble because he was trying to help people out when really he should have kept out of it. And it would save you really, I think, yeah, if he'd not had that. Yeah, no, without without this, without Dudley Hill, I'm not sure where we'd have been. This is a place where I probably learn most of my stuff from, just playing week in, week out with, with a group of lads that I used to play with. If we were losing, pass it to John. <laughs> A few minutes left in the game and you needed a try. John was the one that we always went to. We had good players ourselves. We, we went right the way through the, the league, the top of the Premier. And then we were looking if we got to the semi-finals of the National. We won the, the, the Yorkshire Cup. Probably watching my brother, that got me interested down here itself. He, he perfect done real when he was younger. Just going to games with my mum and grandma and stuff like that and going to watch him. He, he might not forgive me for this. He was in the 14s and we were playing against the first team and one of the players stood on his hand and John got up and wanted to fight him. There's been times where, you know, his competitiveness has been mis misguided, if you like, for um, over-aggressiveness. But John's going to do something. You know, if, if he couldn't go round the wall, he'd go through the wall. But he, he probably could have played in the under-13s at 10. Yeah, that's how good he was. Just enjoyed being here, enjoyed his teammates, enjoy, enjoyed doing it, and he's a winner. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have done it. I do not think he could win and go far. He just, he's not that kind of person. So yeah, we would, first year every training session, last to leave. Put me in good stead probably for life, mate, in general, not just for rugby. It's, it set me up to go forward in life. And yeah, I owe a lot of, lot of credit to, to Leo. He never used to play when we were younger, so I, I kind of like got him into it and asks like my opinion before he makes like big decisions. We're, we're close, we're, we're pretty much best mates as well. and he's, Probably the first person I'd go to for advice and anything when I was a kid and, and probably still now, mate. After every game, I'll, I'll ring him the first person and ask him how I went. And he'll be straight direct with me, he'll tell me if I played rubbish, I played rubbish. And if I played all right, he'll tell me I played all right. So he's probably the person that I trust, trust more. And he's been there throughout my career and he knows probably me better than what I do myself as well. So it's good for me. Got to, you get to about 16, probably when you have to start making decisions for yourself and signing contracts and stuff. And it's probably around about that time where you see a couple of your mates going getting into the wrong stuff, getting caught, causing trouble and stuff like that, getting, getting locked up or selling drugs and stuff. And you just want to try and keep yourself narrow-minded. And I suppose probably Millie, Millie coming, into, coming into my world did that for me, you know what I mean, mate? It's, it really focused me and I knew that I had, I had someone there that I had to look after. It wasn't just myself, you can't be selfish about it. And it probably sorted me out. When she was born, he had to grow up. We had lots of conversations, you know. She's, she, she needs you now, you should, you're responsible for somebody, John, and I know you're only young, but this has happened, and I wouldn't say overnight, but he did grow up really quickly, and yeah, and after that, then he changed, you were more focused. Um, yeah, he he went down the right path, I'd say. Young men, you know, they, they've got to find their way in life as well, I mean, and, and as much as we guided him and coached him, it, it was his choices that, that led him to play for, you know, the teams, you know, and, and the signing for Bradford and things like that. Could he have gone the other way? I don't think so. He, he's too driven. All I wanted to do was play with him, mate. And I could probably, he, he, didn't, he didn't go down well at school. And the teachers were like, you can't just look at it like that. But that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to play with him. Because I knew I had I, I had a bit of a talent there. I knew I was good at it. I pushed everything to one side. And when Miller came, people, like like people do, adults are, oh, you've ruined it now. You won't be able to do this, you won't be able to do that. And for me, it was the other way. I, I was like, right, I'll, I'll make sure I can do this and, and provide for her. That was probably one of the big decisions about signing here. She was, she was born at the same time when I was coming to sign and I just, I just I don't think they were anywhere else. Obviously Bradford came in with a good deal for me, but the little girl we I didn't want to move away from home and it all worked out it all worked out for, well for me at the time. And My family, a massive Bradford Northern, Bradford Bulls fans, so yeah when he signed there, to, to go stand on the terraces and watch him play there, yeah it was amazing. It was a really proud moment. And, 
not just for me but for my extended family because we all they all go watch that I and mean, my mum still watches them now so yeah it was a real proud moment. Well my debut in Catalan there well probably one to forget if I'm totally honest with you. I remember Mick Paul told me I'll be playing loose forwards and mate I must have been about about 80k went through and I, I remember in in at loose forwards that in middle so then Catalan pack at that time was full of big meat heads and stuff. from then I was, I was a bit wary but I thought you know I'll give it a good go and I remember starting the game Got, got kick off past ball on me, I made about 10 metres and I remember getting picked up by a few of them and took back about 30 metres <laughs> and then the second involvement I went through as a blocker from the half back and he kicked the ball and it bounced off back on the edge so I give an accidental offside. Then the third one, uh, <laughs> I shot ball on the line and Matt Diskin took the ball and I missed it and it went straight through my hands. I think I got took off after that, <laughs> we managed to get the job but I don't think it could go any worse. <laughs> I was pretty surprised he picked me again if I'm honest with you. It was, it was tough because I signed at Bradford and I wanted to learn and I got to the point where I'd, I'd had a good season at like 17, 18, got injured then then obviously then got the 11 shirt so for, for me do Elliot 12, me 11 and Elliot's, Elliot's only five year old done me. He li literally lives like 10 minutes further away from me and he used to come through and pick me up on Every, every morning, no. still to this day now, he, he tells a good story that, that, he, that he, wouldn't, he wouldn't never drive down from me, he'd always make sure I had to walk up and he just learnt me as a young kid, they don't come easy and like I said mate, I probably picked up quite a lot from him and I probably still do now mate, he's, he's a fantastic player and I still stand by the fact that he's probably the best back, best back row I've played with myself. And it's Whitehead and Whitehead scores! I, I got to a point at Bradford where I won't, I won't learn anymore, I won't, pick, I won't be able to pick up from other people because players were leaving and we just want competing for stuff and like I said early on, I'm, I'm a competitor, I want to win, I want to win no matter what. And yeah, that's why I made the decision obviously to go from, to Wigan from there. Me and Sean Wayne, mate, to be fair, I remember he tells a good story as well. Tell, well, to be fair, he tells it to everyone. <laughs> he still tells it to this day, 10 years later. I went to his agent's office and we were met with a, with a bag of nerves, um, couldn't breathe, unbelievable amount of sweat coming out of his bro. And, uh, and I, I had to stop asking him questions because I just said, Batty, um, don't just relax a bit. He, 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 when he went, listen, mate, we'll get, we'll have a minute. <laughs> so he, he sent everyone else out of, out of the meeting room, and me and him just sat there to chat together. And it was just from there to fair, mate, just just where he won. He signed for us, and um, was very confident. I'm I'm quite competitive, and uh, and, and he is. So you know, we've always got on very very well. Um, we've had our ups and downs. You know, I've told him straight, and he's he's tried to tell me straight. But as soon as he got into our environment, some players find it quite tough because I do ask a lot of players and staff, uh, but, but he found it quite easy. So it was, a, it was a, an absolute pleasure. I've got the utmost respect for him and I'm sure he has me. So we, me and Batty's got a relationship, but we'll, we'll always get on. Uh, and the big thing, mate, he always, he always stood by it. He wanted to make you a good bloke. Like, and for me, that, that, that's just as important. He wanted to, he always, he still to this day says, it's all right being a, it's all right being a good player, but if you, off the field, there's no point, you know what I mean? Like, people don't like people like that. And he nurtured me in a way when I was over there, looked after me like I was a son. And obviously, being away from the family, that's what that's what I needed, and it helped, helped me massively. And, and that's probably one of the biggest reasons why why I went there and why, why we were successful as well, mate, through, through what he did and through what he taught. Do a good group of young kids, and, and he, he taught us how to be good blokes. And people have gone on now, obviously, you've got George, sort of, Budgie, Gilly, and all of us have managed to come through. And, and obviously, I have his own different pathways, but we've got a success, all got a successful career in rugby, so it's good. If you're going to prove yourself as the best, which we all knew he'd be, we'd, there were no issues with him being the best. He had to go out there to prove that he was who he was, and for them really to stand up and take notice of it. Williams kicks through, but the finish is perfect! And then moving down to Oz, Elliot's there. How big an impact did he have on getting you down to Canberra? Oh, massive. He rang me. I think he rang me when he was one time. And he, he rang me halfway through a year and he was like, oh, Ricky wants to talk to you. And I was like, what? Like, no way. Like, I think it was early morning here. And I'm like, what? Are you being serious? He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, Ricky Stewart. He's like, yeah. I'm like, mate, whatever. And he's like, no, no. So then Ricky, I remember chatting to him and he's like, oh, John, yeah, we'd be interested in coming here. I didn't think all of it. And as it went by, Obviously, a bit more momentum, like picked up with a transfer and stuff. And yeah, it just got to the point where Elliot was like, do, do you definitely want to come? I said, yeah, mate, why not? Obviously, going back and forth with him and Oji asking what he'd be like. And 
spoke to Oji a little bit, ended up signing, signing the contract and I don't think, it didn't feel real until it actually came out. It sinks in massive, obviously, I'm going to be leaving everyone, I'm going to be, but I'm not, not going to be here, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's not just a five minute drive like Wigan Boy, well, other side of the world, but different continent all together and different time zone, weather and everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, the Canberra Warriors we call them, uh, you know, he speaks for himself what he did out there, he was unbelievable and, um, you know, he had the opportunity to stay out there, but obviously wanted to come home and, uh, I think that's massive for Wigan um, to have a player like Batter, you know, in his prime, come back to the club and, you know, hopefully win, win the club a lot of silver. And I remember the game, my, my mum and brother and that came over. Newcastle Knights, I think it was. First game they were there. I don't know if it was because they were there or uh, that was probably the best game I had. And I was like, like I'm, I'm killing it here. Like it's going well. This, like, I just felt like I'll just give me the ball and I'll, I'll, I'll go. Like I'll go all right. I, I know what to do and stuff. And just from there, mate, momentum. There's no no better than a confident player. And I was confident. Like, my, my confidence level was through the roof. And I just felt like I could, could do what I wanted really. And just went went out and out and just loved it. Just enjoyed playing rugby. Obviously, it was tough tough being away from family but when they came it helped a bit more than just hearing them say oh yeah everyone's back home proud of you keep on doing what you wanted to do and stuff so it, from there it just built me and I know John it will be it will be doing his head in that he's not won a grand final in Australia. Obviously the icing on the cake was to obviously win it but we didn't we didn't we didn't win it and yeah looking back on eyesight now I'm absolutely good about it that's what I wanted to do that's what I set my sights on that's what I wanted to achieve out there but you no know, it didn't happen for us and, you don't want to be that person, yeah, but what if, what if? It didn't happen, as simple as that. But, but for me, my experience out there was well, well, fantastic rugby-wise. I love playing rugby there. That's what, it's, it's, it's like being a Premiership football over here. It's crazy, you know what I mean? He had two big injuries at the beginning of the the pandemic year. When, um, and again, that was hard because he was in a really, he wasn't in a very good place at all. So I, I, didn't, I just generally didn't know. Like, you think the worst about everything, don't you? And I didn't know if my shoulder were going to get better, if it, you know what I mean? And then obviously everything hit, then my family weren't going to come over. Then then I think travel got knocked on the head altogether. And I was like, what am I going to do now? And it's always been for me. I just want to play with me. I just want to get out there. And because I stopped doing that, it was just, just made everything harder. And I was speaking to Rads throughout the year and just seeing how he was. Because we've got a pretty close relationship, me and Rads. And he just put it to me and said, what do you think of coming home? And I was like, yeah, well, yeah, when? Family's number one. I think everything he does is for, for us, for Millie. Williams and Bateman. Bateman has gone through. I might just change that opinion. There is Williams with the ball. I'd probably say, if I'm really honest with you, like deep down now, mate, it's the first time that I probably said it. I love being over there. I love play, playing rugby there and stuff, but I didn't love the fact of being away from my family. I didn't, I didn't love it at all. Like. He's very, very close to his daughter, close to his mum. And, uh, and I know how much it means to him to be in driving distance with them. We do a lots of things like go to the park, take the dogs for a walk, mm. play out, things like that. It's so good to have him back. Yeah, it's just been, just to see him with Miller, just to see that relationship and how they are. Yeah, he's he's going to wear that this year and he's pretty proud about it, to be to be honest. And we've also got Sean O'Loughlin still on our coaching staff, which is great. Obviously, when it comes to signing, mate, obviously over... In Australia, Brad sent me like a big email. He mentioned in that about obviously having a number 13 shirt and what, what it'd mean to the club. And yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough shirt to fill. Uh, Lock is the best, coach, best player I've ever coached, without a shadow of a doubt. I love him to pieces, great player. But John Bateman, he's John Bateman, he, he, he's his own player and, and uh, he has all the respect in the world for Sean O'Loughlin. I know that for a fact, but he'll want to build his own legacy and his own reputation. Probably over the past 30, 40 years, there's only been a handful of players played in it, so it's, I think that's what, make, what makes it feel like it's got a bit of weight behind it. When I took over the, 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 the shit from, from Andrew, I, I was probably getting a lot of similar questions back again now, but you don't have any ownership of the shit, you just, you, you just, get, you just get an opportunity to wear it for a period of time. And I was lucky, I had it for a, for a long time. And, I'm sure Batty will be the same now, he, he, hopefully he's, he's here for a long time and he can leave his mark on the shirt. We're trying to develop John's game to, to be a little bit like Lockers in some sense, so we hope we can get John playing his best rugby in that position, whether it's in the middle there or on the edge, we'll, we'll decide that as the season goes on. We've got a team possible to win everything and, that, and that's what I want to do, I'm not being big-headed about it. I suppose if you ask any other player, any other team, they'll I'd say that is that same and our ambitions are to win every trophy we can. He's definitely a leader. What he's brought to this group is just a maturity and, and, a, and a leadership role. He's one of them, John, he'll never get sick of winning. He's not going to come here and try and emulate what I do or uh, what anyone before me did. He's going to come here and pick up from where he, where he left us, really. He left us playing really well 
he's gone away, I think he's improved and he's going to come back wanting to do even more.